Greetings, students. My name is Patrick Keough. I go by Mr. K. And I will be your instructor for Computer Art 1. What I'd like to do is give you a little uh, orientation of the course Blackboard, uh, share my expectations with you for the course, and give you a little insight into how this course works. Essentially, this is a project-oriented, problem-solving class. This is all about conceptual and technical problem solving. Uh, I'm not teaching software, although you're going to learn a great deal about software, image manipulation software in the class. I will not be teaching to the software. The computer is a tool, just like a paintbrush is a tool, a camera is a tool. We're going to use the computer and Photoshop or GIMP or some type of digital imaging manipulation software to problem solve a variety of computer art type of projects. So um, I would really like you to use Photoshop CS2 or above. I'll be giving you a lot of tutorials on CS3 through 6. And if you don't have Photoshop, you don't have access to Photoshop, or you can't afford Photoshop, I have an alternative uh, software called GIMP. Uh, that is open source that you can download and you can solve the uh, various digital imaging projects pr uh, fine with that software. So with that said, um, I really want every student in my class to succeed and I'll do everything in my power to help you. But please keep in mind that you've got to be disciplined. Uh, in an online course, you don't want to get behind. You've got to stay on top of your projects and make sure that you're engaged uh, sharing your work in progress on the art gallery. Uh, the art gallery is essentially a discussion board. So what I'm going to do is take you to the course now and give you a little uh, orientation to the course blackboard and where are the various types of uh, assignments and uh, functions and discussion boards art galleries are located. So give me one second to shoot over to the course. Okay, I am now sharing my screen with you, and uh, you should see you should see the screen of the computer art blackboard. Okay, on the left, we have the announcements about Mr. K. Mr. K is me, your instructor. Uh, some background information about me: I have an MA for MFA from East Carolina University and I've been teaching for almost for 30 years and I'm retired from the community college system and I work uh, totally online teaching art history, art appreciation, portfolio development, graphic design and computer art totally online. Course information is where you're going to find your syllabus, your learning outcomes, my grading policy, uh, some very important information that you need to become very familiar with before you really dive into the class. Uh, the assignment modules, that's where you're going to find all the information about your assignments. The art gallery tab is the discussion board, but we use it as a place to share our works in progress. Uh, web resources, uh, that is where I have links to all kinds of tutorials, uh, places to download GIMP, Photoshop, um, uh, the Photoshop course if you wanted to download that, uh, Photoshop software, um, all kinds of various resources. Then uh, you have a tab. You have a tab for uh, Photoshop tutorials for CS6, GIMP tutorials, image tips, imaging tips and theory, your, how, where to check your grades, and uh, Blackboard help, tools, and um, uh, tips and, and tabs that really are going to help make the course just go a lot smoother for you. So let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, the key, uh, most important tab, one of the most important tabs, and that is the art, uh, the assignment modules. Okay, now. The assignment modules are broken up into two parts, and a key point is this. Each assignment is meant 
to build on the last assignment. So you're going to continue to climb a learning curve, technically and conceptually. I start off with very relatively easy assignments, getting to know the software, just exploring the software, and then step by step, incrementally, climbing the learning curve, giving you more and more challenges uh, with the assignments. So the discussion board, whenever you hear the term art gallery, that is the discussion board. So you're going to be posting uh, at least three versions of your project, of each assignment, works in progress. That is your attendance. So if you're not posting works in progress and you're just submitting the final image, well, I can't give you any feedback. Your fellow students can't give you any feedback. And you're basically jumping in blind and just say, this is my assignment. And I might have some constructive criticism for you. And uh, you would not have been able to incorporate that into your final assignment. And then we use the assignment manager to upload your finished project. OK? And please uh, be aware that the due dates, uh, I really stick very closely to those due dates. I feel like I give you plenty of time. So don't wait until the last minute to do your work, because these assignments take time to evolve, uh, especially uh, conceptually. OK. Um, let me roll down, give you a general idea. So the first assignment, August 18th to the 24th, that's where you're just going to familiarize yourself with GIMP and or Photoshop. So you're just going to play. You're just going to experiment. And you're going to post some playful, experimental images to the art gallery. Now, before I go any further, let me please uh, note that you must take the course entry quiz before you do anything else in the class. So please, I use that as your initial attendance. This is a requirement. Please make sure you take that entry quiz right after you familiarize yourself with the course and the syllabus. OK. Now, let's get back to, uh, so I'm going to take you through. So about every 10 days, you have an assignment. Experimental image, 18th to the 24th. Then the next one, we're going to add color to a grayscale image. So you can literally scan or um, take a photograph, and it can be in color, and you can convert it back to grayscale, and then we're going to add color to it again. So let me show you how this works. So we click on, so we click on the assignment. Everything's laid out the same, OK? So within the assignment, I give you the parameters for how the assignment is to be executed. And here I remind you, it's a two-part assignment. You're going to take one image, and you're going to make it black and white. And then you're going to totally colorize it okay, within the software. Then you're going to do another image, or the same image, and selective only add color selectively to it. All work, art gallery and assignment manager must be submitted and posted as 72 DPI files. OK? I want you to work your images as 300 DPI files because you may want to print them later. And also, it's easier to work on a high resolution file and then convert it to 72. Uh, DPI and upload it to the assignment manager and to the um, art gallery. So within the assignment, please note, I have linked tutorials. Check out these group one here, one here. I give three tutorials here, step by step how to do this. And then I give you a example from another student. Selective color, here's a car, selectively colored, and everything else is black and white. And here is a totally colored portrait of this woman here. So two images, and as you're working, if you get to a stopping point, you know I want to show Mr. K what I'm doing here. Let me post that to the art gallery, and you will post it. And I, will, and I will get back to you and other students say, hey, I really like what you're doing. But you know what? I think you should lower the opacity a little bit because 
the color seems to be on top of the surface and not embedded uh, into the into the image itself. It doesn't look natural. Something up to that um, nature of that. So, so let me jump from the assignment module over to the art gallery, to the corresponding art gallery. So that would be assignment two. So you would come over here, week two, colorizing a grayscale image, and it's telling you to post two. And here's a couple of examples. And then you would click on here. And you would create thread. You would create the thread. And you would post the image to the discussion board. Actually, um, I want it to be embedded into the discussion board. Show you another example here. Here's an example right there. Okay, so you can literally upload it directly into the art gallery. And here's an example of a portrait of a young woman. And the student colorized the hat, the eyes. Uh, very interesting looking total color image. So you get the idea. All right. So assignment modules. As we finish the assignment, as we finish the assignment, I turn off. So by the 26th of August, assignment one is gone and there's no going back. So if you don't get in, I normally give about two extra days um, after I leave it up and then it's then I then I turn it off and the next one pops up. All right. So let's go to the third one, Digital Composite, September 3rd through the 12th. This is where you will take a minimum of three photographs, drawings, paintings, pieces of paintings, and meld them together into one seamless composition. Now, this one's more a little more difficult than the colorization. As I said, as we move forward, the assignments get a little bit more difficult. And just like in the last assignment, you click on it, and I give you the parameters. I give you video tutorials on how to do these assignments. I even give you some of the tell you some of the tools to use. And I have additional links here on how to make a quick mask, how to, how to do uh, paste-in options, paste versus paste-into, and some examples. Here's one a student put a guy jumping through a donut. Um, some very interesting, I love this one of the fishermen inside the, inside the martini glass with the fish. You're really going to have a lot of fun with this class, especially when you begin to feel confident with your technical skills. All right, so then uh, after that, you know, you just have to set up a timeline for yourself and schedule time each week to work on your projects. Then we're going to use filters. And again, every time you click on one of these folders, it gives you the parameters. It gives you tutorials. It gives you uh, examples on how to go about and execute the assignment. We're going to be using creative use of filters and curves. Here's one. The next one will be adding text to images. You can do magazine covers. You can do something more artistic like um, uh, analytical cubism, for example, adding text into an abstract image, something like that. Um, but every time, and here, this one's fun, the scratch made. So you're not going to be able to use any uh, point of departure images. You've got to use just the tools in Photoshop 
to create pictures using the tools and the paintbrush and the pencil. And you've got to do two. You've got to do one that's abstract and one that literally is representational using the pen and the pencil and the various tools in Photoshop uh, to create abstract and representational art forms. Okay, then we're going to do digital and collage landscapes. One is basically a step-by-step -step tutorial that you're going to execute and then you're going to take what you learned and do your own. I always have a lot of fun with the assignment number eight, art history concept. That is such a fun assignment. You're going to go out and, and look for an art history image and find an image in art history of painting and try to replicate that or add your own personal touch to it in Photoshop or GIMP or the image manipulation software you're using. Give you tons of tutorials on how to do pop art, cubist, impressionist, surreal, lots of, lots of tutorials. I've already gone out and found the tutorials for you. And if you don't, if you still want to look for more tutorials, just jump over to the left side of the blackboard and you'll see PS, CS6 tutorials, GIMP tutorials. There are so many out there. I just have many, many resources for you that um, you shouldn't have any problem executing these assignments. But with that said, you still have to put the time into it. It's not going to just happen. You, you, you got a choice. You can throw something together to get a grade or end up at the end of the semester with a very unique, visually dynamic and interesting digital imaging computer art portfolio and be proud of every image that you created. I always get students playing around with, of course, Mona Lisa, Grant Wood. Um, this one's an interesting one here with, uh, with the Vermeer portrait. This is fun, the one with uh, the barmaid in Bosch, uh, Bosch's uh, The Ar Garden of Earthly Delights. Here's a new twist on a Botticelli. A Magritte. And you got to love this one here. Again, these are ones students have done in the past for me. I just love Darth Vader and, and Grant Wood. And there's Elvis and the Jan Van Eyck painting. So again, I'm giving you lots of examples to kind of get your, your creative juices flowing. All right. Um, get back to assignment modules. And hopefully you have a better idea now of how this all works. So uh, filters, text, scratch main images, digital landscapes, art history concept. Uh, you're going to have fun with the self-portrait. You're going to do self-portraits. And then we're going to do digital photographs or called scanograms, where you're going to scan objects and create an interesting composition with scanned material. Then we're going to do what's called mirror image assignment where you're going to create reflections in your uh, in your digital images, in your computer art images. And these are fun. Again, lots of tutorials. These can be uh, abstract. And I take you step by step right through how to create these mirror these mirror files like this car and then creating that very cool reflection in the ground I take a step screenshot step by step how to do it alright so hopefully uh, this little orientation has given you uh, some familiarization with how the course works uh, we'll be ending with digital restorations and then my favorite project at the end is what I call blow Mr. K away, meaning blow me away. Take everything you learned and create digital art that is just off the charts. And it, so funny, a, a student in a previous class took me literally 
and that's me being blown away by this little boy. With, and I have my hat, and I'm blowing away across a, a wheat field. Uh, this is kind of like your final exam. And I'll be teaching you how to add metadata into your files. And I'll be creating a slideshow, an online slideshow of your best work. And these are some that students have done in the past. So that's a glimpse of the course. Again, um, always check your school email because I send out my announcements as emails. Uh, make sure you take the course entry quiz. You've got tutorials, and I also, in the imaging tips and theory, have a lot of good digital theory there. You have to take a, a little quiz at the beginning. More instructional videos. Uh, if you're a Mac person, I give you information about the operating system of the Macs. I talk about metadata and copyright issues. Workflow. Workflow for photography and digital imaging is very important. So we're gonna, I'm going to teach you some things about workflow and ask you to use workflow concepts uh, in this course. Very important that you understand about digital resolution. So we're going to talk a lot about that at the very beginning. I have a PowerPoint presentation on, on digital theory. That's going to help you with the quiz and then some other uh, quick and dirty handouts on how to execute some of these assignments. Well, I am very excited about teaching this class. And we will be getting started. Uh, we'll hit the ground running right after you take the, uh, course, ver the course verification quiz. And if you have any questions, Always feel free to contact me via email. I will also have uh, Skype office hours. So if you want to talk about an image on Skype, uh, that'll be set up. And my Skype information is in the syllabus. So um, I'm looking forward to teaching the class. And hopefully this little orientation has given you some insight uh, into how the course works and what my expectations are for you. So I will see you. Uh, in the art gallery and uh, again feel free to contact me via email or just post a question to the art gallery I check in every single day okay see you in class